Hello everyone, good afternoon. I hope you're all doing okay. Today we're going to be learning about spaces. So a lot of people um, are kind of afraid of drawing faces. I've got a very, very simple method of doing them. So I'm going to be guiding you step by step. I'm going to be working on charcoal, but you might want to be working with something else that you've got at home, if you've got pencils, if you've got pastels, whatever you would like to use, it's absolutely fine. Okay, so the materials that I'm using today are, oh, we've got charcoal, I've also got some blending sticks. These ones are very, very cheap and they're great. I've also got a little rubber. These ones for the people that have been taught by me, they know that these are my favorite to work with and I love using rubbers. And then I've got a regular rubber as well and that's what I've got at home, okay? It's not the Sharpie, we don't need that one. So I'm going to get started by drawing a um, kind of egg shape and I'm gonna keep it kind of vague okay so it doesn't you don't have to make a very very strong line it's better to keep it kind of soft because we're going to be adjusting this um this this outline afterwards so you just want a little bit of a guideline after I do that I'm going to make a mark and this is a very, very important bit. This mark is the hairline, okay? So I'm gonna write there, hairline. From the hairline, I'm going to more or less see how I can divide into one, one, two, and three equal spaces, okay? And you might have noticed that my lines are slightly curved and the reason being is that our face, our head is three dimensional. So that's why we curve it. So I've got so far an egg shape, I've got a line for the hairline and then I've got three equal spaces divided by two lines. Okay. So <clears throat> these are um, general proportion rules for the face and they are general. Of course, we're all very, very different and our proportions vary from person to person, but they're more or less generic rules. Once I've got that, I'm going to make a line in the middle. And the line in the middle, I'm going to put it on where the nose is. So if I'm doing a three quarter face, my line would be over here, okay? But I'm gonna show you front for now and then on another lesson, we'll do other head positions. So I've got that so far and then, on the top line, I'm going to draw the eyebrows and also the top of the ears. On the middle one, it's going to be the nose and bang on the middle here, it's going to be the lips. At the bottom of this line is the bottom of the ear. And the same on the other side. You can make them slightly different because, of course, we are not totally symmetrical people and our, you know, the features vary from side to side. So, so far I've got this. Bang on the middle, I'm going to do the lips. And I want you to notice what I do for the lips. I don't really do outlines. I just draw more or less the shape of the lip and I'm going to do a shadow. And then at the bottom lip, the shadow is going to be not as strong. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it at that for now. Then under the eyebrows, I'm going to start drawing the eyes. That's my toddler there. <laughs> and over the other side, I'm going to draw another eye. So I'm just drawing two almond shapes and I'm putting in a little bow in the middle and I'm not committing to anything. Um, what I want to show you is that the distance between two eyes is one eye, okay? So one eye, the same distance 
and then another one. I can draw another eye there faintly just for you to see that that's the distance between two eyes, okay? So from here, the ends of the nostrils correspond to the tear ducts. And the end of the lips should be in line with the iris. And especially the pupil if the eyes are centered. So now I can tell that my eyes are not completely centered. So I might correct that a little bit. Okay, so I've got that so far. So a quick recap, hairline, three equal spaces, top of the line, eyebrow and top of the ear, bottom is nose, bottom of the ear, bang on the middle we've got the lips, we avoid the use of outlines and do it with shapes and tone and the top lip is usually darker than the bottom one, okay? So from here I'm going to draw a neck. And usually the neck is just under the ears and it's kind of like a straightish line, a little bit inwards. And I'm going to do a little tiny bit of shoulder. I'm going to leave it at that for now. So at this stage, what you would do is <coughs> grab a rubber. If you're working in something that you can erase. <coughs> if you're not working in a material that you can erase, don't worry about it. Because if you're working in paint or if you're working... Um, in pastels, what you can do is that you can cover those lines up later, so it doesn't really matter. But in charcoal or in pencil, it's better to rub them out at this stage now, okay? I'm not going to get rid of them completely, it doesn't really matter. <sighs> Give it a quick blow and that's it. So from here, I'm going to be establishing the hairline. I'm going to make my head a little bit bigger because I have to make room for hair. Okay, and I'm leaving it quite big. So now I can start working a little bit on the nose. I kind of just make the shape at the bottom there. And the rest of it is going to be done with tone. There's not really much more lines. You can do a little bit of an indication here if you want. But it's better to be left like that. Here. I've got that little bit of a shape. And we've got the chin. At this stage, if you want, you can correct the shape of the face. Okay, so, so far I've got that. Not looking very pretty, is it? But hey. So now I'm going to start doing tone and I'm going to start thinking about the skull. So some of you <clears throat> might want to work from your imagination, the way that I'm working. Other of you might want to work from the mirror and have a look at your own face for reference. And other people might look at, I don't know, portrait of Madame Matisse or perhaps, I don't know, the Mona Lisa or any other painting that you might have in a book at home, you could also do it from a picture of a magazine. It's it's exactly, well, it's not exactly the same, but whatever you guys prefer is, is good enough. So at this point, I'm going to start, I'm going to break off my charcoal in a little bit, and I'm going to tilt it on its side. And I'm going to start applying tone <clears throat> in every part of the face that is normally sunk. So in my head, what I've got is a skull and what parts of the skull are black. I think that's a really simple way of thinking about it. It's not gonna look very pretty, but it's absolutely fine because I'm working on base layers at the moment. I'm going to do it on the cheekbones, underneath the cheekbones as well. I'm gonna do it underneath the mouth. I'm gonna do it around the chin area. I'm gonna do a big shadow under here. I'm going to do the inside of the ears. And I'm going to do a little bit of base layers on the head. Now, it's very important when we do the head that we start thinking about it in terms of planes. So I always explain to my students 
that a plane is every time an object falls in space. So let's say I've got a, a piece of paper and it's a little bit of palette here. And this is in space and every time I fold it, this paper is occupying a different plane in space. Okay, so let's say in the hand we've got loads of different planes every time it's folding into space. Okay, and it's spelled as a plane as in an aeroplane, so P L A N E. So you can also look it up on the internet and just make sure that you put art next to it so that you get the correct definition for what you're looking for. So I'm thinking about it as well how is the hair folding up on space? And at the moment, I'm just doing it very, very rough and thinking about it in terms of dark, mid and light tones. Yeah. I'm not working on any, any detail at all whatsoever because detail is always left for last. So I'm not gonna do any, any detail right now. So I'm just gonna take a quick step back, which is a very important thing to do. And I'm gonna have a look and see if things are working or what is not. Sometimes when you're working very, very close to what you're doing, you can't really see the mistakes that you do. So it's very important to take a little bit of distance. What you can also do is that you can Put it against the mirror and look at it from the mirror view that also works so from here i'm going to start working on a little bit of detail of tone notice that i'm dragging my charcoal on the side i'm not using it as a pencil because it's charcoal okay so from here i'm gonna start Putting in some detail, but it's all pretty rough because I still got loads of work to do with rubbers and blending stick. So I'm just giving myself a really good day. She's looking very happy. <laughs> so. Okay, and the nostrils on the side of the nostrils are usually a little bit darker. The bottom of the nostril is usually a bit darker as well. And there's a nice big light at the middle. I'm just leaving it all very, very rough for now because I'm going to do a lot of work with the blending sticks and I'm also going to do a lot of blending work with the rubbers. I want to make sure that I've got at least five tones. I'm looking at a light, at a mid light mid mid dark dark okay so from here i'm gonna grab this one and i'm gonna set myself a tiny bit of a ground all over the face which you can do at the beginning you can just set a ground all over it and then i'm gonna grab my blending stick I'm continuing to add more darks wherever I feel like I need them and working with a blending stick. You can actually arrive to quite a lot of realism by working with blending sticks and charcoal and putty rubbers and other materials. I'm not going to be looking for super realism because I want to get this video done in an amount of time that it's not going to bore you so i'm going to be leaving it to be a little bit more gestural i'm also going to put a little bit of charcoal on the whites of the eyes <clears throat> and with a smaller blending stick bit of blending there blending sticks are great they can also help you to refine and diffuse 
any areas like you might have a mistake and you can just incorporate it and then you can grab a small rubber like this one these ones are called tombow i'll put a link later on you can buy them in amazon and they are amazing because they really are, allow you to work in detail and because it's shaped like a little bit like a pencil um it makes it really easy to draw with okay <clears throat> so as you can tell while i'm working and rubbing i'm kind of like losing the drawing i'm constantly having to find it again and that's part of the joy of it for me so i hope it is for you as well rather than seeing a mistake and going like oh no i must give it up you know just always carry on working and looking until the point that is going to be working better for you okay i'm gonna leave that for now because it's always better when i teach i always tell my students to <clears throat> leave the details for the end because if not you can get really engrossed in trying to get a detail right and then <clears throat> you obsess about them and you don't finish the rest of the drawing as well so i'm just moving backwards and forwards doing a little bit of blending here and there I'm not going to blend absolutely everywhere because it's also nice to get the grainy quality of the charcoal through in your drawing rather than everything being super smooth. Okay, so now I'm going to quickly get my rubber out. And if you think about the nose, noses are really problematic for a lot of people. Um, they were definitely for me a lot when I started drawing faces. Um, and I think it's just, if you think about it as a kind of like triangular shape, and that triangle is coming out of the face. So you need to lighten up that bit on the ends that are the bits that are closer to the viewer. And then that would make it look more three-dimensional and then you kind of make these planes on the side a little bit darker and use a bit of directional mark making which means I'm indicating that this plane is going downwards yeah and then I'm gonna get again that one she's looking very ill with coronavirus this one <laughs> okay so more or less got that bit gonna go back to the nose make the nostrils really really dark okay now i'm gonna come to this area at the top just to give her a little smile guys a tiny bit of a smile <laughs> okay and um, now I'm gonna smooth out this bit a bit and here I'm just thinking in terms of what the shape of the lips are um, the bottom bits of the lips are usually a bit fuller But that of course changes from person to person they say that you always draw your own face that's because your face is the one that you know the best and my top my top lip is quite thin so i usually do a bit of bottom lip all right just gonna bring this shadow down a little bit and create a gap And correct the chin so I'm constantly reworking what I'm doing and that's why I like charcoal because um, with charcoal you can always rework what you're doing <clears throat> and if you make a mistake that mistake can be incorporated into the drawing rather than 
making it look really bad and still it's a little bit less forgiving and if you make a mistake it kind of like shows okay more or less insinuated what the ears are and i'm just gonna leave them as, as such so now what i'm gonna do give a little bit of toner swatch to the rest of the neck and my blending stick out again i really recommend that for you guys that are at home <clears throat> that you start with the egg and you do the three divisions but you use your own head as reference um, working from a mirror and I used to do that a lot when I was younger and then I did a lot of life drawing and try to work from life it's always 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 better um, but if you're stuck at home you can always use yourself as a model because you're not gonna move and also you know your your, your face really well So now I'm going to start working a little bit into detail with the hair. So, so far I've got a plane established here, I've got another plane established here, I've got another plane established here, and another one in there, and another one in there. So there more or less you can see the sections that I'm going to be working on. Yeah. So from here I'm going to start making lots of lines. And my lines are going to be curving with the hair where I've got a dark plane and a mid plane I'm going to do lots of marks and where I've got a lighter plane I'm gonna make a little bit less my mark making is directional so it's following what the hair would be doing and that's helping me achieve um, some form of realism or illusion of um, three-dimensionality okay so so far I've got that what I'm gonna do now I'm going to get my rubber out and start erasing now if you use the edge of the rubber you can get a line which is very useful and I'm using the rubber to draw at this point I'm gonna go a bit more charcoal because I feel like I'm ready up so here I can start reinforcing my darks. Because in the process of rubbing, adding, blending, you always lose your darks. So you always have to come back to your darks and reinforce them. Okay, at this point, I'm going to grab my two little precision rubbers. Oh, I love them. Also precision. So, one of them is shaped as a dash, and the other one is a point. Okay, so with my dash one, Now I'm gonna go back, add some more, add on, take away, add on, take away. All right, more or less I'm gonna leave it at that. At this point, and it's only at this point that I'm actually going to be engaging with some detail. 
I've got my drawing kind of done, yeah? So detail is just embellishing my drawing and it's the last step of all. If I can teach you anything today, it's going to be leave the detail from last. And if you're doing a face, you don't really deal with the eyes until the end or halfway through. Never start from them. If you start from the eyes, you're gonna be spending 40 minutes, maybe an hour just drawing an eye. So just leave them for the end and you'll be able to see the whole face as a whole rather than concentrating on that detail that is really, really attractive to you. Okay. So <clears throat> let's have a look. So, so far I'm kind of like correcting the shape a little bit and giving her um, eyelids. I'm not going to do the eyelids exactly the same because as I said before, eyes are asymmetrical, they're not exactly the same. I'm also going to add those little sunken bits. So I'm going to blend them afterwards, okay? So, Um, with eyelids, I think it looks really good if you kind of like make them darker at corners and give them a little bit lighter in the middle. And that helps to give the illusion of them being three dimensional. So in the middle, I can lighten up a little bit with a blending stick and refine the line at the top a little bit. And then with this one, I'm just going to give that highlight there. I'm also going to give a little bit of a highlight in here. A bit of a highlight in there. A bit of a highlight on the side. And it will help me correct the shape as well, the round shape. I'm going to get a little bit of a pupil in there. And I'm going to stick a couple of reflections. Now, reflections are really good at just giving life to something. Yeah. Now that I've got my reflection in, I can darken the top of the eye as well, which is normally darker than the bottom of the iris. And that's because of the weight of the, uh, what do I call it again? Eyelid. So, I'm just going to rub a little bit there. Okay, I think I'm quite happy with that one, so I'm just going to leave it. It's not absolutely perfect, but it will do. Yeah, just darken a bit there. Okay, cool. Let's go to the other side. Uh, just tiny bit of lines in there. Okay. So, uh, the eye, I don't know about you guys, but for me, the um, left eye is always the hardest to draw. Maybe it's because I'm right-handed. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to do the same. We're going to darken and improve the shape of the eyelids. Darken both corners. Gonna make that a little bit smaller. Make that a bit of an outline. And then I'm gonna come and blend in here before erasing. shape of the eye yeah okay so we give it an outline okay 
time to darken the top, get my pupil in. Let's correct the shape of the iris a bit. And let's get some perfection again. Make the tops a tiny bit darker than the bottom ones. I'm gonna give her just a couple, not too many eyelashes. I don't like giving too many eyelashes, I think they start looking a little bit funny with too many eyelashes. I'm also going to give a little bit of a shadow to the nose because shadows are very good. And making things pop and become a bit more realistic. I'm gonna give it a shadow over there. A little bit more. The chin is really tiny, isn't it? Let's correct that chin. <laughs> Sorry guys, I got a camera that is not letting me draw because it's in my way. Yay! <laughs> uh, I'm gonna correct the chin a bit. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a little bit better. Okay, so that shadow needs to be blended in. Okay, I'm gonna kind of leave that here and just as a touch, get my rubber out and start highlighting and when you're highlighting you need to think about where is the light hitting the face so if you're working from a picture you will have your highlights already worked done for you if you're working from your imagination you have to think about where your light source is It's usually over here, at the top of there, in the nose, top of nostrils, top of the lips. Chin. A little bit of the jawline. Oh my gosh, we didn't blend that cheekbone at all, did we? Um, yeah, I think we're more or less done. I mean, I could carry on and on and on, but we're gonna leave it here before you guys get totally bored, which you probably are already. So, that's portraits for us. So, quick recap of what we did. First of all, a non committal egg shape. All you need is an egg. Then you mark the hairline. From the hairline, you divide into one, two, Three equal spaces. The first one is four is um, hairline to eyebrows on top of the ears. The second one is eyebrows to nose and bottom of the ear. And the third one is nose up until chin. And the mouth is bang, bang in the middle. And then we started drawing roughly where um, the features are. And after that, we started <clears throat> marking the areas that are sunk to start defining the different planes in the face and in the hair as well. And <clears throat> then we started doing a little bit of detail and blending and adding on and taking off and adding on and taking off. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed um, this lesson on portraiture. I'm going to do more on portraiture using color 
So I'm probably gonna do one using oil pastels and then another one using uh, chalk pastels and perhaps leave and do one using acrylic paint. So, <laughs> or maybe not. I'll have to think about it further. But I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you keep drawing. See you soon. Bye bye.